Who wants to talk about Ant Month? You want to talk about Ant Month? You can't talk about Ant Month. All right. You talk about it. So welcome to see you here. Welcome to December. I got a full month of craziness for you. A couple episodes about amps. We got a special getaway. Hopefully we'll get some some nice some nice vibes out to you later this month, but it's a surprise. It's a secret and a surprise. We'll get to that more toward the holidays. So welcome to December. Ant month. That's our tradition around here. And I want to get sentimental for a second. Can I get sentimental? Play my little imaginary violin. I remember in 1991, I got my first electric guitar, right? And my mom got me a little crate amplifier. It was a 10-watt crate amplifier. And the thing served me well for at least 15 years. You know what I'm saying? And the thing, I always use it for recording. In the year 1997, I believe it was, I bought an amplifier of a bass mark's friend. I believe the name was Galena, I think, right? And it was my Marshall, you know what I mean, half stack, which, you know what I mean, that was dear to me. But in that period, from 1991 all the way to 1997, a long time to have a little amp. It was the only amp fire I had, and I made a lot of recordings back in those days. And I remember when I first was in the Fire Axe Brothers, my friend Tom Pafford, he had the same amp. It was a little older model because Pafford was a little older than me, you know what I'm saying? He's still a little older than me. He'll always be a little older than me, right? Anyway, I had a plug, like a patch cable. I hooked these two little crates up together. And it used to sound so loud. Everybody else that was in the little fire brothers were, oh, you know what I mean? I played this old Gretsch, uh, out-of-tune Gretsch, you know what I mean? And, you know what I'm saying? 1996, 1996, I believe you think that was. Yeah, it was. 1997 is when I got the Marshall. Long time ago, man. So I'm going to show you, I don't know what happened to Pafford's amp. I guess I got to ask him. You know, I know his son plays guitar now, so peace be with you, Pafford's son. Let's talk a little bit more about this crate amp. I'm going to flip you around here, look at it. I'm going to show you some pictures, maybe, if I can find some. You know I got pictures. You know, hey, you got some pictures for you. So let's have a great time. Let's enjoy the looseness around the holidays, and let's get loose together. Hey. I knew this girl, she was so loose. She was so loose. How loose was she? Well, <laughs> I put my whole hand on that bitch. One, two, three. So here it is. Now, actually, just looking at it real quick before I turn the camera on, looking at the serial number, I remembered a detail that I totally forgot. That I remember that in the year 1993, right toward the end of the year, my senior year of high school, I remember that the ant got blown out. Somehow, just blown out. I wasn't playing it real loud. You know, so I was, I was just, you know what I mean, playing it. Then we took it back to the Free Old Music Center, where we bought it, and they gave us a new one. And I checked the serial number, and it is because this date code right here, F. That's 1993. September 1993 is when this was made. And that's the actual serial number. Made in the USA. Right? Good old USA. Remember, this piece of paper is off my desk. It fell off my desk into the amplifier. Now, thinking about that story and remembering that story, this being broken, you know what I mean, and, and having to go get another one, I started to think in my mind, I was like, well, maybe it got broken again. And that's why I started using a PV. I basically was using this to record bass with. Whenever I would record bass, I didn't I want to record it out of my Marshall, especially when I got a little bit more advanced and was doing digital recordings. You know what I'm saying? I was pretty much using this to record bass mark through. You know what I mean? It's playing his Rickenbacker bass, a little speaker. It always sounded a lot better mic'd. Liked it nice and clean, nice and sharp. Now I'm starting to think maybe there's a problem with it again. It might actually not work. So let's plug it in and see if it works before I, you know what I mean, start fucking beating my chest like King Kong here. Because this is actually a replacement. 
This is a substitute for another guy. You know what I mean? I look pretty tall, but my heels are high. Right? This might not even fucking work itself. And I don't think Freeway Music Center will give me an exchange this time, man. It's been a little too long. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know after after we plug it in real quick. Yeah, those repressed memories were real. This amp is fucked, people. This is going to turn into a repair episode. Check this shit out, man. Got the guitar, right? Nothing. All we get is this bunch of static and crackling, man. Nothing. Bullshit, man. We're going to have to take this fucking thing into the lab when we're told. You see that? Maybe. Yeah. I remember why I, I started getting into using that little PV amp. Now I remember. Let's, uh, it, it might just need a little bit of contact thing here, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? So let's bring it into the laboratory, unscrew the top, and see if we can spray it down, man. I'll see you there. Oh, my God. More work right before the holidays. I thought I'd have an easy time. Welcome back to the laboratory. It's so freezing outside and fucking breaking my balls. So what we gotta do is we gotta take this guy out. Take this guy out. Take this guy out. Take this guy out. Then we should be able to carefully remove this box. And hopefully have easy access to these potentiometers back here. And spray them down from cleaner. Get that guy all sanitary. Now, we want to be very wary that we just plug this fucking thing in so we don't want to touch anything that might kill us. And that's the tip of the day. So, I feel a little bit detached, son. You know what I'm saying? I thought we could have an easy ride. A slow ride, as they say. That's an easy does it, son. Easy does it. Look at that. We have easy access. And see those little holes on the side there? Yes, yes. So we just gonna spray them down like fucking mad and just. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I guarantee you we're gonna be a thousand percent. We got them in the place where they should be, so we know where to put them back. I got my, I got my spoon in the nose, man. The people that I knew at the lanes, man. I'm ready to go. You know, say, hey, it doesn't feel hollow inside, man. So let's clean these off real good, and I'll see you then, Shunny. Right. Mm -hmm. So we let it dry for about a half hour. You must break so much shit in there. They're all limber now. See that? Real limber. This one was the real bad one, too. Squeaking like a motel fucking mattress, man. See, this is pretty cool, man. Look at this. SLM. You see that? St. Louis Music Electronics. You're right here in the USA, man. St. Louis Music. That's the big crate. The crate, man. Cradlematic, man. So let's just plug it back in, man. Let's not screw it in. Let's just set it in there. Shed it in there real nice, Sonny. Hook up the speaker. Bring a guitar over here, and I'll see you in a second. If we got it all still sitting in there and all purdy, and I say, let's screw it up, Sonny, and have a shell holiday, and it's just a real drink. Or I'll have it back down here like, you know what? It doesn't fucking work, man. I'm going to have to replace this. I don't know. Order this, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Woo-hoo, bah humbug. So I'll see you in a second once we catch it out. You sucker. I want you to see the state of affairs for yourself, son. Look. Works, man. Look, remember this knob? See that? Remember all that crackling it was making? I don't want to spoil the surprise, Sonny. So before we do our little test show, I want to take you down memory lane. Take you a stroll down memory lane, Sonny. See you there. All right, so let the trip down memory lane commence. This is the only photograph I could find from, you know what I mean, holidays in 1991 where I got my electric guitar. That's the Epiphone with the banana, you know what I mean? Hockey stick, headstock. Love that thing, man. Right there in the back, you can see, like, behind my little desk. My desk, man. See it there in the corner, man? That's the only photograph of the original one before it broke. 
say, man. I can tell this was 1991 because that's the way I comb my hair then. You know? The only time I had like a, a big quaff, man. This is 1996 when I first got that Gretsch, man. Saw it in this shop, the music shop in Seager. My mom just bought it for me on a whim. She spent $300 for it, maybe even $350 for it. Gary. And there it is, man, out in the patio. Plugged in there's a little socket back there. My mom's house was in the patio. Very 50s kind of setup, you know what I mean? With a little barbecue grill. I remember I went to Eisenhower's house when I was like 12. And he had like the same kind of setup in his backyard. I was like, wow, man. The same kind of charcoal grill and everything. Benches. Benches were almost the same. It was in Ike's backyard and he had a little outlet like this sticking out of his patio. I was like, wow, man. Living like Eisenhower lived, man. <laughs> so this is those air walks, man. This was 96, man. This is also from the summer of 1996, a little later in the summer. Toward the end of summer, I'm recording with Bass Mark in my room. You can see I got, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I didn't have the uh, Marshall stack yet. See Bass Mark's four track machine there. I love that Gretsch, man. I, I really, I still do. I mean, I love the smell of it. Here's the original cable. You see, that's my curly cable. Actually, it's not the original cable. I think I had a cheeseburg cable that came with the guitar first. Yeah, man, bass bar's carving bass, too. That thing's long gone. Old 7-Eleven Slurpee. Slushy, whatever the fuck. Uh, I was using furniture polish on my guitars even back then, man. And they're all still in good condition, too. Every one of them. This is in... Fall of 97, right up when I got the Marshall stack from Base Mark's friend. You know what I'm saying? I was living in Norwood Avenue in the great city of Long Branch. You can see how this Beatles poster always migrates with me. It's everywhere, man. <laughs> Back in the day, man. And there it is. Strong Branch right on the wall, man. City by the sea, Strong Branch, man. This is before I even had the Rickenbacker, man. This is a Hoffner clone. Hoffner handmade copy that I restored with the help of Dr. Patillo in about the year 2000. That's for a different story for a different day, people. That's one of my favorite instruments in the world. You see, cast off to the side, there he is, man. You know what I'm saying? Goodbye, Norma Jean. Though I never knew you how crazy old yourself. Those around you go, right? And years pass, man. See, I painted my my wall, my studio upstairs, the same color as my bedroom wall at home. You know what I'm saying? Strong Branch had a white wall because I had a you know landlord. I own this shit, man. I want to get the, the vibe back, man. My studio. I actually don't even record up there anymore. It's just filled with guitars right now. Filled with all kinds of guitars. That speaker is still up there. But I have that head down here because I do all the recording in the basement. Since 2008 when I got a full drum kit down here. Originally Banco's. This is, this is 2007. Upstairs we're recording Christine. That's John Hamilton's guitar. Right. A rare moment. You see cast off in the back. There it is, man. What? Well, well, all dusty, rusty. That's where I just got it from, man. All the way in the back there. Right there. You know what I mean? Out of the way, motherfucker. Dig through. This thing, this PV, was still plugged in. And I haven't recorded her up there in like 15 years. You know what I'm saying? It was still plugged in. Crazy, man. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll do an episode of this next year. And I went to check the wall and it was plugged in good. So I just left it. We're good. This is my washburn, man. My favorite instrument. You see, that's, you know I mean, a constant in these illustration so 2007 you know I mean it sat there ever since I started getting on this thing because it was all fucked up and now we've repaired it it's back in commission so it's probably the first time I've actually used it since around I'd say 2005 was right around the time I started getting into this thing this PV you know what I'm saying these guys just don't cut it anymore He's on the corner, man. Selling his fucking cabinet for crack. Hey, right, so let's hear it, man. 
let's have the special test run, and then I'll sing and dance around for you. <laughs> so here we are, man. It's almost time to hear it. First, I want to set some ground rules now. First thing I want to tell you about is the fact that this year I don't have like a little you know, studio microphone you know, running through the board because I have a new phone. And the phones these days, let's face it, I mean, if John Lennon had an Android, you know what I mean, they would have no need for fucking Lord of the Flies guy, man, Peter Jackson. You know what I'm saying? They, would, they wouldn't even have to have used Jeff Lynn back in the day. He would, you know, a useless Wilbury would, you know, you know what I mean, be best known for a fucking medieval woman, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, that aside, you know what I mean. This this is a new phone this year, so I figure we don't even we don't even need to do that. You know what I mean? Hey, if you think it's not that good sounding, I'm sorry. I apologize to you. Second thing I want to talk about, I always use this LTD, you know, ESP from China. I featured it here on my show. You can you can Google it and check it out. A whole episode about it if that interests you. You know what I mean? But I use this because Ricky D says this is the greatest sounding guitar I have through the board in the studio. And hey, man. This is the best, best sort of best ear that I know. You know what I mean? As far as those things are concerned. So, that being that, this is, this is the test, man. I'm turning it on. See that, man? Turn it on. You hear that? That's the uh, neck pickup. blend I have all the EQ knobs right around noon uh, one o'clock two you know 205 maybe for the treble <laughs> so for the rest of the thing I'll just gonna stay right in the middle pickup That's that man. And the other thing is overdrive. Let's try to get it like real overdriven. Remember this thing was sort of like really good with that. Maybe I was just imagining it. Maybe I was imagining it, man. Maybe I was thinking it had like really good overdrive. Right, here it does, all right. This is good. That's kinda of good. This goes down, that's right. Just undid those top screws. And got some electronics cleaner. Say goodbye to Hollywood. Now let's get all your shopping done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, 
here we are, man. Gonna give you the test guest courtesy of the holidays here. The Crate GX15. What is that right? GX-15. Mm -hmm. This thing doesn't sit up right in the chair. Yeah. I had my tuner fell behind there. It's kind of sucks, man. Because it's like behind the bookcase. Cables everywhere. It's already sh sort of showed you how it sounds. You know what I'm saying? It's a sentimental amplifier. So I hope everybody has a good Christmas. I wish you the merriest, merriest Christmas. And happy New Year. Hope you did all your shopping by now. If you have it, well, that kind of sucks, right? You still got a lot. You got a lot of road to hoe. Get out there and start shopping, people. Happy December. Happy Ant Month. Keep me with you. everybody happy christmas god bless you and month continues next week we're getting ready for our adventure all right peace be with you all please see you soon and month friends stay strong